that was like my turning point in my entire thing. That's why this thing initially I just started this motor journey, bringing justice to you guys. Who died? Who died? But that thing became very real. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have someone who needs no introduction, but I'll try to give one anyway. He's a content creator with over 60 million views on just YouTube alone. He plays video games at night and makes headlines in the morning. He owns a clothing line and a couple of restaurants. He's considered inspiring to say the least and aims to bring justice to the people. Oh, and he is also one of the most well-recognized food reviewer of the country. He is, of course, Iftikhar Aftan, Iftikhar Aftan otherwise known as Rasan the Chodove. Brother, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? That's that's a pretty sick intro, man. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the longest ones we've done. Like, as I'm saying it, I'm like, Tunisha So, hence the... <laughs> but, you no, know, like... but great intro. <laughs> yeah, like, I made it last night. And I'm like, you know what? First, I had to chill. And I was like, nah, man, this guy needs a bigger intro. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I know that August was a pretty eventful month for you, a lot going on. How was yeah. September, like how is September shaping up to be? So September has been, wait, September just started, right? It's been six days. It has been yeah. pretty interesting. Like I didn't, really didn't film anything, but I know for a fact like this this year is gonna be my year. It doesn't make sense. So, uh, you know, like this September in general, I really want to start doing something kind of crazy. Like I have a lot of plans this September, like a lot of plans. So uh, mine, that's, that's a start. Giving us a few hints or clues about what plans you have coming up. Mm, let's just say I want to do something which I always wanted to do. And inshallah, the parvo, because, you know, like, I don't know, like, I have to the Kupa there for an hour. <laughs> but, okay, other than that, I want to go international. You want to go oh, international? Okay, yeah. so I already know that, like, 30 or 40% of the viewers that you get are from international viewers. So how more yeah. international do you want to go? Oh, damn, you did your research for sure, that's for sure. But... <laughs> I want to go completely international. Like, asta asta, what I'm trying to do is, I'm purno jato videos chilo, oigulami English subtitles, though, start to see YouTube, even on Facebook. Like, yeah. the main platform I'm targeting is Facebook rather than YouTube because I feel like Facebook has a lot more potential. And there are some insights many people don't know yet, but so Mark, the founder of Facebook, obviously, <laughs> so he invested like both a year he's allocating one billion dollars just for creators on facebook imagine you're you're on facebook so you make one dollar right so for one dollar you get an additional extra dollar so that's how it works uh like right now so the main thing is this is like a four month program given to a lot of creators on facebook who have a lot of reach so Basically, the model is Facebook in general, it's like a marketing platform as well. So, ad place for So, if you make pay, you make money because they keep a commission. So, the bigger you can get in these four months, they're going to extend this in stream multiplier. This entire program is called in stream multiplier. I don't know why nobody mm. talks about it. No creator ever talked about it. It's been out for a while. It's been out this like, it's been two months since it came out. But only the creators know. But like people in general, they I don't know. Can I any kotha hotche na? But yeah. So it's this thing. So joto hit kotha parba or a char mash thike extend kore bara be bara be bara be. So a time I was really planning on you know going international. Yeah, <coughs> that sounds very complicated. But bye bye to Bangalis I guess. Bangalis they're Belsha seven <laughs> time for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm grateful for Bangladesh, definitely. And like, main, main focus Bangladesh by Bangladesh. But international audience, hello, hi. So, you know, representing yeah. the country, you know, panic yeah. me. And <clears throat> speaking of Facebook, I know that you started your Facebook page about one or 1. 1.5 years before you started your YouTube page. Yeah. And 
the first post you wrote bitches gear up i'm taking over this city going to bring justice to food <laughs> and you know <laughs> are you for real yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man I uh, that I I think maybe maybe and the pager now the whole so uh, Rafsan versus Food or Man versus Food I don't even remember Yeah it has it was likes and one share and you know that sounds <laughs> that sounds extremely confident Jay, you're like bitch is gear up so were you that confident yeah. while starting the YouTube channel or were no. you just doing that for like the lols? Listen Listen the only reason I was even able to you know post that status was because I knew kyo dekh dena <laughs> makes sense yeah so like oh, what man. do you remember about shooting the first video is there something you learned during that video that you still do today yeah definitely so basically ami kintu video shooting erar pa kono mane kono idea o chilo na i had a friend ekramu he was he's the reason i'm here today and ekramul is the guy they had a channel ekramul and nabil they had a channel it was called your gap so they used to make videos and i always wanted to make videos then my friend ekramul she amake jor kore shuru koraise and bolche na tu he just picked me up from university and he started recording bolche jai ichcha tai kor and i don't know me jai ichcha tai korchi and he edited the video as well tokhon ami edit o korte partam na Yeah, he's the one guy who shared the first post. So, there's that. <laughs> Man, he he is something. He is cool. He's super cool. Yeah, so what were the things uh that you learned that day that you still carry today or things that you try to remember today? Or did you start any superstition, any traditions before shooting or while shooting? Um one thing jeta ami onek kortam oi time ta was ami amar hate ekta phone ra that kind of became my thing so the next two years i would keep a phone you know then for i could afford a microphone then oi tar kora hoy na but that was yeah, a tradition which and it became something signature yeah like oi ra oi ra kintu ekramuler phone chilo man and we used to shoot on my phone and dui ta milai we would sing and it, it was kind of cool it's kind of cool that's good to know so <clears throat> you know since people think that the life of a youtuber or someone who's famous is very easy they go around they get free food they get free jama kapoor and stuff you know so if it's okay i'd like to share like two struggles of your life and then pass the mic to you so i know that um this one day you were losing a lot of games on fortnite or something and you got frustrated and then you decided to go for a walk and you kept on walking and you kept on walking and that endorphin rush just made you become an active person right and another struggle was that like you said um your friend started a youtube channel and you want to start one too and they said those do to mota to they to food related channel should go right <laughs> so it's almost like the two struggles that carried you forward to new heights you know that made you start something or made you start made you do something that eventually became a lifestyle so are there any other struggles that come to mind when thinking about the struggles that made you who you are okay like i don't think it was cs go just clearing it out you heard of cs go right counter yeah, strike yeah. yeah oh okay cool cool yeah So other than that I had a few struggles I'm not going to lie like the so in 2018 I was working in this agency so I'm going to agency ta kaaj korte sam so meta year gap nisilam so semester gap nisilam semester gap ni am agency ta kaaj korte sam and things were going great agency ta kaaj korte si but the main reason I'm agency ta join korte si was because I'm just I'm just videos banatam onike ekta assumption thake oh restaurant e jaba mal na khaba eta it's not really the thing আমি দুইটা স্টুডেন্ট পড়াতাম স্টুডেন্ট পড়াই যেটাতে আই উড আর্ন ঘুরে ফিরে আই উড এন্ড আপ সেই খাবার খাইতাম ভিডিও বানাতাম অ্যান্ড দেন আই উড এন্ড আপ ইফ ইটস আ গুড ভিডিও পনেরো বিশ ডলার বুঝ দিতাম নর্মাল বাট দেন সো ওই এজেন্সিতে জয়েন করার মেইন জিনিসটা ছিল তারা আমাকে বলছে আমি অ্যান্ড দেড় এডিট ফর মি অ্যান্ড আই রিলি নিডেড দ্যাট 
because ami bhi videos banachi na my friend ekramul he needed to go to uh he left for canada and he was the one who was editing my videos and at that time i was like you know what i'm going to join so me join course see join corp so i did a video okhane it was at an fish market versus fish tanko and taka ta video korbo oi ei jemat ta oi ta khabo kete to bhaloi taka lage oi taka to definitely chilo na so my agency theke that according to them they would give me the money so taka ta paisi video banalo but in that video jawar agtie amake the owner of the agency she bol tisko je he had shares in fish and co's mother company right he was telling me that so bol se a to let them win right so that fish and co wins so tokhon era biasness esha porchilo and tokhon na first i went to manhattan amar kache bhaloi lagche bhai ami jokhon fish and co te geche ami বসানোরছে যে he's going to give me 2000 taka go up give it to that bhai and go like you know what i'm not going to do this and this should be your turning point and that was like my turning point in my entire thing that's why this thing initially i just started this motor just bringing justice to you guys who die who die it was like more over hair yeah but that thing became very real oi point because you we all have আমার কানে আসছে কে কত টাকা খায় একটা রেস্টুরেন্টে থেকে সামথিং লাইক দ্যাট it was a very big struggle because honestly speaking i was not making any real money till 2020 my till mid 2020 so for two two and a half years it was it, it was a big struggle and there were times restaurants did offer to pay and stuff but yeah i would say that is one of my biggest struggles and i actually i think you know when i was like kind of Do you know after first week when i started i mean videos on it echo in video videos i get a lot of positive comments like the social listings for 92% it's positive i'm grateful but when it, it didn't start out that way it started out manush jon gala gali korbe bot ka khaite khaite puitta jabi and you know when i started off my uh, my first video i had amar hate i had a skin condition it was called scabies so there would be outbursts in my skin so oi khane manush jon like manush jon ke amar nijer batchmate try bolto je khatchor eita seita onikei bolto so it was quite a bit of a struggle but i'm glad my friends they helped me out that time they really told me to just go with the entire thing so i feel like these are some of the struggles you know you talked about how first i think that there were a lot of hate comments did at one point you think that you know maybe i should stop or maybe okay there's a lot of hate there's so much hate that maybe my content isn't really good was did that thought ever pop into your mind um not really but quitting jinish says sometimes because i always thought side be because i'm first taking to i was even active to begin with ভিডিওং even okay, in your first post like i mentioned you said we're going to be bringing justice to food right and hmm. you know first day it was just a random ajaira line 
but the fact that it yeah. got a meaning as you went on sort of is sort of like an omen that maybe you were meant to start it you know do you ever feel like that that yeah. maybe this you were meant to be doing this you know yeah it it brought life to the entire thing the entire statement yeah actually so yeah um i know that you changed school when you were in fourth grade and then you sort of became a little bit more introverted so was hmm. that a uh, factor that played in when you started doing youtube or interacting with the people who commented on your videos um honestly <laughs> speaking i i till fourth grade i was in a school everybody was in a school come on <laughs> no not everybody actually but yeah editor please don't keep this <laughs> <laughs> but um so to fourth grade i was in playpen after that i switched to scholastica and then it was a different environment to you know getting used to that environment and stuff and around sixth grade i started watching a lot of youtube but you know i always wanted to be a youtuber and i always wanted a play button right so but i i mean jibo no never in my wildest imaginations did i ever imagine to be a youtuber like that is a dream trust me when i say it, that was a dream like impossible i i am not youtube material like i, I was a introverted like amake diye jinish ta hoto na straight up 3 million so, people would disagree but go on mane <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy honestly like Uh, so jibona even bhabio nai so and i still feel like i do not appreciate this thing enough i don't because this was a dream you know so it's kind of crazy but just changing schools i think that really just made my confidence lower <laughs> so i don't think it had an effect i think ikramul had the biggest effect honestly Yeah, and because if um, Ikram will never force me, I would never start. Yeah, and like since you talked a little bit about confidence and how your confidence went down, like I remember, so I was in school till grade nine, and then because of some things, I had to leave school. So I had to leave school for like three years, and then because I was in another country, so I came back to Bangladesh, and then I started school again in like grade eleven. and what i found was that you know the grades from 9 and 10 those are the grades where shobai ekshathe coaching e jay shobai ekshathe front end hoy right right so since i left at 8 and joined again at 11 it was almost like okay shobai shobai shathe friends but ami kar shathe friends tar shathe friends now you know because right. most of my childhood friends they left school when i rejoined so it was all new people it was all people from other sections so first of all i was very <clears throat> not insecure more like sort of introverted kaushe the kotha boltam na because i didn't know ki bhabe kotha bolte and then i started doing like um do you know muans yeah 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 so i started doing muans and other events and sort of that got me to build my self confidence up to actually think you know what i guess i am someone who people would like to talk to so you know just like with you with youtube i feel like whenever someone tells me that oh bha i'm on a confidence on form or i struggle talking to other people i just tell them to do something that makes you feel confident or do something that you love doing and yeah. that will sort of make you more comfortable with everything else you know it's about getting out of your comfort zone right yeah are you say you get out of your comfort zone and you do something and then you like doing it don't they okay if you feel mm. confident doing that you start feeling confident doing other things as well whether that's working out playing video games socializing yeah. whatever it is you know so yeah um that i feel like is a big point and that is a very solid point yeah okay so uh coming to a bit of your lifestyle changes and what not so i know that you were 118 to 120 kgs in 2017 and that was like your yeah. highest point when you started your video you lost like 40 or 50 yeah. kgs in 2018 and then in 2019 40 yeah 40 kgs in 2018 by the april <laughs> of 2018 right if i'm not mistaken by april hmm. yeah 
and then in 2020 which is your last document yeah. <laughs> wait you were 81 yeah i am still around 81 <laughs> yeah so um still around 81 <laughs> yeah so given the fact that you go to a lot of restaurants right now and you know you eat a lot of food and you have to eat food because that's your profession almost what's been the hardest part about staying fit so hardest part about staying fit honestly speaking the struggles right so i have had multiple ups and downs on the scale i have been 73 i have been nearly 90 man after i lost weight so you know you see like i've been bouncing around but for the past six months, I've been very consistent with my weight. I have been around the 80 kg line somewhere up 1 kg plus minus. But the entire thing was the gym. Like recently, I've been to a lot of gyms, but recently I've been to a pretty decent gym. It's called Iron Nation. The crowd is nice. The trainers are better. They're amazing. So that really motivates me to go to the gym because nobody's really judging you or something. And I feel like the entire thing, it's a byproduct, okay, of going to the gym staying fit it's a byproduct because you feel good when you go to the gym that's why i go because i was i was feeling like shit. i'm not gonna lie so now i'm feeling kind of happy i guess because i went to the gym so that really helps honestly it's over us it, it can be a struggle but it's also a blessing yeah that's true Jay, like going to the gym i used to go to the gym Continue go there because I was so lazy. But the days I would go, you know, like I would wake up at like 9 a.m. I'd be like a morning gym kind of person. So I'd wake up at 9 a.m. I'd go there, gym till like 10, 10 30, come back home, take a shower. And after that, the whole day just seemed a lot more easier because it felt like the most yeah. active part of my day was done in the morning, you know? So yeah, that's true. Yeah. And about like judgments. I know that, okay, so let me share like a quick story. So um, back in like 2015, 16, I used to take this medicine. It's called dexamethasone. And if you take that, um, what happens is that your face stores all the sodium in your face. Like your body stores all your sodium on your face. And sodium mm. kind of collects water. So what used to happen yeah. was that our face pura fula thakto. Huh. Yeah, like I could see my cheeks. I could, I would look in the mirror and I could not recognize myself. But then because I'd look so fat, I didn't eat, right? So I, did, I used to like starve myself. I used to just live on salads and stuff. And so I ended up losing 15 kgs, but I still looked fat because my face was like, like a moon, you know? Mm. <clears throat> so Tahun, something that you said re resonated with me is that you know, back when you weren't as fit, maybe people wouldn't say anything to you, but you'd still feel judged just because on the inside, you were judging yourself. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, you know, to an extent, that's how I would feel. So do you have any advice on how to, you know, stop judging ourselves? But if I'm being super real, this yeah. advice is super real. Like, I mean, EJ Porcelum. Or I actually watched in a video. Honestly, nobody, let me tell you, when you're walking somewhere or something, nobody really cares what you're doing. Nobody. Maybe for a millisecond, but they do not care at all. And yeah. just keep that in mind. And whatever you're doing, you're doing it for yourself. Because, you know, like the pain <laughs> you're going to feel today, it's going to be your strength tomorrow. That's what exactly. I personally believe in. Yeah, like we all seem Same to from think working that... out, not from like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we all, you know, naturally, we all think that we're like the center of the universe, we're the main character of our own movies and our yeah. own TV shows, that, yeah, yeah. But in all honesty, no one has time to think about you when their lives are so busy, you know. So, yeah. that is something to keep in mind. Um, so I know you go to a lot of photo shoots, you go to a lot of video shoots. So let's come to a fun story. I know that in 2020 or 2019, you got in a golf cart accident in Sripur. 
during a photo shoot. Um, so are there any other fun stories from photo shoots that come to mind? How do you know that? <laughs> like I said, man, I did my research. <laughs> whoa! Yeah, whoa, that's interesting. That's super yeah. interesting, but okay. So fun things. Okay, so this one time I collaborated with this YouTuber. He's the best ever food review show. He's like one of the biggest YouTube channels like globally. Why guy? The, around food. Yeah, yeah, the white guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So what happened was we went to where was that place? I think Oriki. You sure gone chill? Acha. Now we went to this place. It was a pretty remote village. So that it's actually a YouTube, YouTube village. village. It's called yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kushtia. Kushtia. It was Kushtia. in Kushtia. Yeah. So Okane, while we were saying like it was kind of cool because like I don't know, no internet at all. Like 2G or catch cut this and so we were all talking and then it was era come hobe. J there were like seven people, seven of us, right? Sunny had six people and me. Right. So it was like a few people would be flooring, a few people would be you know on the beds. Yeah. Then around 3:30 a.m. the rats kicked in. Oh no. <laughs> it was scary. Then then and then yeah, we all just you know, we shared the beds. It was it was but nothing really that interesting happens actually. I think wait, I'm a lot of interesting things do happen, but I'm not more for it. Wait, I'll just go through my videos. Oh, 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 oh. So wait, wait. Nah, era como wait. I'm just gonna seeing seeing. I don't dude, my life is not that interesting. I mean, other people would say that someone who gets kicked out of restaurants and university has a pretty interesting <laughs> life. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> It looks interesting, yeah. but dude, at that point a lot of anxiety kicks in. Like usually before I have a thing like before I usually do a shoot, I get crips and I jait up with my crew members. Ekhonor bashar bashi northen, the summer northen the jet. We have some coffee and we talk and oishmai na pata anxiety hoy. So this one time I wanted to wear a lungi and to sava. Dude. Yeah, to sava. And yeah. I was like freaking out jami parbo na jinishta because pata na anxiety ka chakra even ekhono ami jodi na video korte jai onek anxiety ka chakra but jokhon na anxiety ta joto beshi anxiety hoy toto jos hoy video ta. So that was I did a video. So that video got like almost 20 million views. It was Saman Muktadi versus Tohid Afridi. Yeah. So in that video, <laughs> I was not even sure if Salman Muktadi and Tohid Afridi were gonna show up. I was so yeah. nervous, but I was so glad they showed up. <laughs> but hey, other than that, a lot of interesting things do happen. But I just don't remember. All right. Short-term memory loss. <laughs> That's actually good. There's this saying that. The happiest animal in the world is a goldfish because it because it has a 10 second memory, you know. So what for real? Yeah, for real. <clears throat> but in general, I'm I don't know, man. Like I'm our I can forgive, but I can never forget. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, speaking about that video with Salman Mukhtar and Tahir Afridi, I watched that video when it got released, and it was one of the more You know, it was one of the more different videos by a content creator in Bangladesh. You know, it wasn't a normal yeah. food review. It wasn't a normal okay, I'm going to review this or it's it wasn't a vlog, you know. It was more like a challenge yeah. and it had real money on the line. And like you said in the video yeah. it was your money that you put up no sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. were you scared for a second that Salman Mukhtar is going to beat you because Tahir Afridi we know he's rich he's not going to go through the tough trouble for one like that you know <laughs> but <laughs> dude i last day the ke ami bhabchi me here jabo ami last day i just put up a poker face i mean kintu i cannot take a arekta single bite ami nitei parbo na i put up a poker face and went like you know what let's go next round dude that helped i should play some poker man I should play some poker because I didn't want to lose my money. So I was super excited. That was that's why I was celebrating. Do you have any other plans of doing videos like that with other people or anything else regarding collaborations with other YouTubers? 
so I wanted to do a Salam Mukhtadi Tohida Fidi Part Two, but this time I wanted to give six. All right. That would be very interesting. But that one, I yeah. don't know how many. But for the international ones, I'm planning on collaborating with a lot of YouTubers, like globally, all throughout. Yeah. That's good. So, fun fact about me: I'm every day at night with Bombay Morichi Acha Dev Hat. So, yeah, <laughs> um, we should do a challenge. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, maybe one day we could do one, and I, I would be a lot richer at the end of the day. So, <laughs> oh, dude, you can't beat me. I, I, I live on spice. I love spice. I'm wearing red. <laughs> I have red flowers, you know. So, oh yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll see one day. So one day. Yeah. Um, so given that you know, speaking of restaurants, given that you have your own restaurant now, Habibis, um, what are some of the things that you learned while reviewing other restaurants that you implement in yours? What are the things that you actively try to avoid that you saw in other restaurants? So a lot of things I realized was. Consistency is really hard, especially for a brand new restaurant. Because Habibi's Jahan Resto first, we got a lot of negative reviews initially, but then after a while, it became consistent. So it had its ups and downs. And at that time, I was uh, I was quite initially very active, even though right now I'm not that active with Habibi's at the moment. But that is one of them. I learned a lot of things because I would go every day. And university poor poor jetham, che and what I gorum chilo jai got and it was during summer. Woo! Then yeah, QC got them. Basically, QC means quality control, so you have to eat. So yeah, free food. Or a person poor at the jetham. Nice. So fun fact, I study in NSU, so most of the days that I would go have lunch in Rajbari, I would have it from Habibis. So did you like there, it? Yeah, I loved it. Like, actually, so, yeah, I love it. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Yeah. yeah, like especially the rice meals for the price they're at. I feel like they're really good, you know, and they're different. Oh. Like they have the falafels, they have the white sauce all over it. It's yeah, good, you know. It's so good. yeah. So if you could suggest one item for anyone to eat from your restaurant, what would it be? And I think it's in English for them. Forgot you answered this one. Item at each other. So if you're going for the rice, I would really recommend the gyro over rice. And if you want to try a roll or a shawarma, try the crispy chicken roll. It, it's kind of good. It's yeah, and the, the gyro over rice. The gyro over rice is the one I got almost every day. So yeah. Oh so yeah. So what I was gonna ask is that are you? Thinking about plans on extending it to Dhan Mundi, the Dhan Mundi area, because you know, North South has been closed for over a year, and I've been kind of yeah. missing it, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, we are actually planning on expanding to that side of the region, Dhan Mundi not specifically, but Ashe Bashe, Ashe Bashe. All right. Hopefully that covers Dhan Mundi. Yeah, deliveries. Yeah. All right, that's good. So, um, Arjun Shuchen, now that you know most of the people in most of the rec- uh, restaurants kind of recognize you the waiters the people around you has that sort of made your job harder in some ways in the sense that it has made it less fun it has made it less fun in the sense in what ways i think you go to a restaurant they the service they would provide i feel like it is significantly better yeah <laughs> makes sense Yeah, yeah. Like not so even it's extra not really cheese the... there, stuff like that. <laughs> it's usually the meat. It's usually the meat. <laughs> Quantity okay. fatai barai day, and like they try to be on their best behavior, things like that. So it's not fun. That's why I want to do international, honestly. All right, that something that more sense. genuine. Yeah. So, like, I know you made some videos with your mom in quarantine where you used to <laughs> deliver food in the house. Was that in some ways easier or more comfortable to shoot these videos? Oh, okay, okay. The ones during the pandemic where I would yeah. order in food and review with my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Okay. Yeah. So that one was that one was actually kind of easier to do, but it was less fun. 
and honestly our marshal jo hona first video ta kori i cooked for her and i was very nervous because i don't know how would i tell my mom the yo ammo at the video the thagba please and a time time my dad was stuck in khulna my brother was stuck in sweden and it was just me and my mom me and my mom for 45 days and you have to you know eto kichu kortam i would make videos and stuff so i thought you know what ami like age amar upore je fan ta oi da mutam onek kichu and my mom she's very immaculate like she wants to keep everything clean so onek kichu te we would be sharing the chores bashar eta sheta something like that so it was fun and i really bonded with my mom a lot more during the pandemic because tar age amar onek busy chilo am bashay time ditam na to honestly speaking and ekhon kintu ami aro beshi bashay thaki like i am bashar theke beroi na ekebare oto yeah like um the time i was in the other country right so tokhon I was with just my parents mostly most of the time just my mom. So <clears throat> even though it was kind of boring I didn't have friends I didn't used to go out that much. What I am very grateful for during that period is that I bonded a lot with my family because at that time they were the people I used to talk to the most, right? And that was sort of like my own personal quarantine before quarantine began almost and now that this quarantine state is back almost i feel like that bond has sort of come has sort of came back because you know quarantine age everyone used to go out every day time thakna at the end of the day yeah. at the end of the day when you go out at like 12 or 1 and come back at like 9 or 8 pm it's like you know it becomes hard so given the fact that you are from an army background you grew up yeah. in sort of a strict you know family now that you're in quarantine you're having to interact with your family much more how has that experience been like not just with your mom but with your brother with your dad the overall experience in general mane wait after quarantine okay after the initial quarantine started the fact that we stay okay. basha most of the time and stuff so before honestly speaking i'm being very real like i would consider my parents as parents like i wouldn't consider them my friends but you know had yeah, strict oi dikhe lukai rakhbo ei rakom and you know then when you start asking we don't ask our parents normal things like hey uh tomar school life kemon chilo tumi school e thakte what would you do for fun yeah. তুমি তোমার ফ্রেন্ড এর সাথে হ্যাং আউট করতে যেতা এইটা সেটা এন্ড ইউ নো জাস্ট গেটিং টু নো अबाउट योर पेरेंट्स बिकॉज আমরা যতই জানি উই ডোন্ট রিয়েলি নো आवर पेरेंट्स दैट वेल এন্ড when you get to know them they become much more than just your parents they become your friends and i'm very grateful for that and personally so my parents are oi type er je you know when you think of depression তাদের কাছে জিনিসটা ও আরে তুমি ঘুমাও আর কিছু একটা ঘুরে আসো স্ট্রেট he has been like growing up i was always scared of my dad like he is someone i would shit my pants talking to or asking for something i would never ask for anything but this man has like i was recently more than ever i've been feeling super low and he is the one who tells me cliche things like chade je just just yeah. chat just look at the sky because you know the sky is so broad you feel better it's dumb i'm sure na i hash this up but I also felt very grateful because that's true like you can feel the care I can feel the care and <clears throat> my parents are the ones ekhon amake like amar ma especially amake bolte se je you know je ghure asho kothao for je friend er sathe hang out koro growing up or pap ke tu bondur birthday to jaita dikho na and this man is telling me je friend er sathe adda diye asho amar bhal lagbe because he genuinely cares he's trying to understand me and 
dude i appreciate that so much i can't even tell you like it means a lot it means the world that's true yeah like even in the last one year you know because my dad has been going to work a lot less like we have formed this tradition that almost every other day we have dinner together and he sort of tells me a story about his childhood whether it's the first mm-hmm. time he got an income whether it's the first time he was like betrayed by a business partner anything you know like and every day he seems to have a new story that he tells so vividly like it, that i can almost imagine it myself you know so <clears throat> like i've realized that our parents are people with so much story je you know like i would want to know more so it is you know i decided je yeah. on my dad's next birthday or the one after that inshallah i'm going to gift him a shadow writer who will follow him around for like 30 days and who will ask mm. him questions and write a book about him because i feel like he's had a pretty interesting life so yeah. you know that's <laughs> so, that's a very cool birthday gift yeah so i feel like people should talk to their parents more and like you said like we don't know what they used to do in their school life and aajkal i just go yeah. up and i i was like hey, quite in a guy i was uh, <clears throat> at our birthday school and i was feeling really old so i am barka se jaya i was like man i'm turning 22 tumi ki korta jahan tumi 22 chila and i was feeling very sad je oh my god i'm turning old you know so he was like tumi matro 22 bochhor hoila ish bhaish to one kya i wish i was 22 bochhor right now you know and he sort of started saying stories about when he was 21 22 23 and that sort of lifted my mood up in the way je okay you know yeah to me 22 is old but in the grand scheme it really isn't that old you know? re- so, yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah people should talk to their parents more especially given the fact that Definitely. there's like a few weeks of quarantine left before hopefully and moreover life goes back i feel <laughs> like our parents are getting old and yeah. we're going to be here for a while but we have them for a very limited time and yeah. tokon i know a lot of us are chasing money success like i personally i'm trying to i'm trying to chase success but in that process i end up forgetting about my parents right and i might have all the success all the money in the world in 20 30 years but my parents might not be there right exactly yeah like as we grow old like when, when we're younger we don't think about the mortality of our parents right like we yeah cannot imagine a life where they're not in the next room but eventually it starts kicking us say okay you know maybe we should start yeah. taking this more seriously so yeah seriously <clears throat> yeah so as we're winding down to the end of this interview i have just two questions left one is that um i know that you won an international best co-host award for the best yeah. ever food review show channel uh what was that experience like because you know you competed with a lot of people from a lot of other countries as well <clears throat> so that felt pretty surreal because like while i was doing the show with sunny sunny is the dude from best ever food review show the dude so he kind of believed in me a lot like he at that time i had like 30000 subs and 70000 followers on facebook he was like ekta jinish bolte sta about consistency je if you're uploading and earlier amio mentioned kursi i would upload once every 3 months but say you have to be consistent like he told me i had what it takes and i was like a younger version of him who had more energy so that really motivated me and oi kare kintu aro youtuber chilo like bangladesh ekta youtuber chilo oi shomoy he had 400000 subs at that time he was the shit and this dude like he demotivated the hell out of me he was like look for other career options this that and onek kharap bhabe jinish bolche je oh tumi tumi je ta hocho eta ke bole holo ki jani in the moment or something ki ki kemne jani bolche he was not a good person at all not a good human being to be honest and not a very supportive one even though i tried asking help from him but rather ekhane ami dekhchi je amar nijer bhai bangali bhai amake na help kore ekta bideshi bhai amar aro motivate korche i don't know if i should be sad or happy about that but 
when I won the Bestie Awards, it meant a lot because I would be competing against YouTubers from other countries, right? There was Cambodia, Laos, Nigeria, and a few other, I think Hong Kong and Vietnam. So winning that amongst these people, these YouTubers who are more famous, who have been in the game longer than me, that was a big confidence boost. And I did not expect that at all. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, so, you know, you talk about how the Bangali guy was more demotivating hmm. than the foreign guy. And that is something I guess hmm. a lot of creators will <clears throat> attest to. That oftentimes it is the people of our own country who sort of don't believe us or sort of maybe wants to go against us, you know. So with that hmm. in mind comes the story of how in you know early August you were your Instagram account was hacked and you lost yeah. accounts with millions of views and hundreds and thousands of followers. So Tahun, I know that you recorded this video and you were very demotivated. Obviously, in the heat of the moment, you said some things like how you realize that this isn't really a career for you or maybe this isn't as stable as you thought it is, you know? So <clears throat> what was that experience like? And looking back on it, what are some of the things that you've learned from that experience? So looking back, one thing straight up, a lot of people supported me. A lot of people motivated me. A lot of people said a lot of nice things. And I'm super grateful for that. But then again, I farted in between if it's all right. Too much information. But, uh, you know, like this thing, it's a short lived career, right? This entire thing about YouTube. But the entire thing is making it last, making it, you know, not being succumbed with the things like money, fame, other lost, things like that. And it's more about why you started and not forgetting your roots, right? And that's what I want to do. I don't know if I'm going to be but I want to keep on doing it yeah, as long as it lasts. Yeah, that's this good to know. Not bad. Yeah, um, that's good to hear. And I'm sure a lot of people will be happy with the fact that, you know, you want to continue as long as you can. So, yeah. And You're a very awkward human being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can relate. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, Jay, something tells me that you can relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... <clears throat> The last thing that I have to ask you is that do you have any advice to give for any creator, any human being, anyone at all that advice from Iftigar Afsan? Anything? So, the biggest advice I would give to creators in general would be being real, like being original because even if you keep on copying someone this, that, this, that at the end of the day, your audience will watch you for you and only you. Your content, yeah, but also you on how you represent your content, on how you show your content. So being original is, you can take inspiration, that's for sure. But you have to stick to being original. So, and the second thing, in general to everyone, creator about thou, shop kichu about thou. Like, never have this regret in life, Jay, what if? Because you don't want to miss out. And moreover, it's like, think, the video thing. This thing is something I always wanted, but it pushed me to start it. But a journey ta, in the same way, many people have similar journeys. They maybe they wanna quit their job, start something, then follow your passion. That's what I would say. Because when you follow your passion, you can you will definitely achieve something. And it's not about exactly hitting the goal, it's about the journey. While you're gonna hit your goal, that's what you're gonna remember. Because 10 years down the line, our monet has been out. Our 2 million followers on Facebook is done. It's about the journey to that number, about all the moments, all the friends you made along the way, all the ma massive fuck ups you made along the way. These are the things which 
which will be your story not your achievement it's, it's the journey so why not make your journey like interesting one right that's true so be original and focus on the journey two things that are the core of your advice so thank you for coming on uh, thank you thank you rafsan for coming on board thank you for being a part of the show although onik guli onik bar kete gese onik guli edit kor lagbe it was genuinely <laughs> genuinely very lovely to have you to the audience listening all the cuts in the middle of the show or the cuts in the middle of the video are due to network problems nothing else but uh, i hope you had a good time coming on board and thank you for being a part of the show <clears throat> Thank you so much for having me in the show. It was an honor honestly speaking and you're a great host. You do your research on like many people and yeah. I hope you guys kill it. And thank you so much guys to the viewers watching for actually having me. Legit. Thank, thank you. you.